Hi everybody and welcome back to the <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to the Short Corner Podcast. This is episode number one. Uh, we're going to be reviewing uh, AC Milan 4-0 victory at home to Crotone with two goals from Ibrahimovic and two goals from Ante Rebic. Today I'm joined by Joe. I'm joined by Rid. I'm joined by N- Name. And I'm joined by Samir. So overall, for the, our first ever um, podcast, it's quite a nice one to be reviewing because it's a nice 4-0 win. And I don't think we've really battered a team in a while. We've um, obviously had a couple of losses and we've, um, yeah, we've, uh, we only scraped past Bologna in the last match. So it's nice to have a nice 4-0 victory for the first time in quite a while. So overall thoughts on the game. Um, we started with... Um, the typical 4-2-3-1 and the only real um, places in the team where there wasn't the normal starter was centre-back where Kier has been out and Tamori's filled in. Um, Metier was in for where Tonali or Benacer would normally be. Um, and then, uh, interestingly, probably the most interesting part of the lineup uh, was Liao kind of played in the cam position like a second striker. So I think he did really well. He got the assist for the first Ibra goal. Um, and... I was I was pleasantly surprised because I, I saw it and I thought that I saw the graphics being um, posted all over social media and my immediate thought was um, this has got to be a four four two and I was thinking why has Pioli changed the system but it, when the game got going it was a four two three one so um, did you did any of you feel pleasantly surprised by what you saw from Liao as well? I think Liao has really proven himself in the, this game especially. That he can just cover up any attacking role where he's put into. He's played striker, he's played a cam, left uh, winger, right winger. So I think, and he's still young, he can only improve. So, you know, I think he's showing really good things and he's proven himself as someone who can just go in there and play uh, wherever he needs to be played. So I was really, I was surprised by that as well because obviously, his playing as a cam, it's in that formation, it's really complicated and especially fitting in for someone like Shannon Long who just can control the game. Um, Leao just took his own way, played his own game, completely different from like how Hakan would, you know, control the tempo and dictate the play. He, he took a completely different approach, which was true to himself. And I think, you know, it's, he's a good player to have right now, still young, um, has the explosiveness himself. He can just, you know, get the ball sometimes, dribble a couple of people and then score or put good assists. So I think he's a good player to have. <clears throat> going forward as well. Joe, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, um, yeah, I thought I thought Leo was really good as well, actually. Um, but um, but when Hakan Chalano came on, I think eventually you could see what the difference was in having him in the team. But um, from Leo's standpoint, I think he, he did really well. Uh, but I mean, he's probably most effective on that left wing. Even so, I mean, he's got lost this game. I think today he showed like a really good like long ball, which which found its way to like Rebic in like the first half. And, like, it was like I was really impressed by that, and also that I mean Rebic like scoffed the chance in the end. But um, yeah, they, they all did really well, uh, especially those those assists. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really think he had that sort of uh, sort of timed like through ball like in his game. That sort of like pick a pass like for a really tight defence. But, you know, he's, he's proven himself and you know, it wasn't an easy game uh, today either. His Crotone were like really quite, um, you know, they were strong on the ball, particularly in the first half. They didn't, they didn't actually like create very much, but they were, uh, they were, they were a threat. So yeah. I think he did, I think he did really well actually. Yeah. I want to talk a bit about Frank Kessi. Yeah, he was phenomenal. He was very, Absolutely. very good today as again. Consistent. I would, so as far as say he's world class, I think this season he's been one of the yeah. best box box midfielders in the world. Mm-hmm. He's just you know you know we feel safe and confident with him in the team, him on the ball. You know he can tackle, you know he can pass. Well, he's passing, he's improving actually. I think it's going to get better, and you know you can always rely on him. to previous season, he wasn't he wasn't as good in the role he was in, but as a in a pivot, he's he's very good. Yeah, what do you think? What um, do we think of Mete? What do, because I think that was you know the first all right. minutes game. Yeah, so that was one of the other like our best lineup is Donnarumma, Teo, 
uh, Kier, Romagnoli, Calabria, um, Kessie, probably Benacer, probably Leal, Hakan, Salamakas, Ibra. So there was a couple more players who were um, in that probably wouldn't normally be in Pioli's ideal world. And they, they were two of the people who have been brought in this January on loans with options to buys in Metier and Tamori. So if we want to maybe go into a discussion on um, that side of things. So, yeah, what do we think of Metier today? Because he played against Inter and he got uh, quite heavily criticised because, um, yeah, he, he seemed quite ill-disciplined. He seemed like he was just waltzing through the game and he didn't seem as though he had much concentration today. And I think today it wasn't some rude hullet performance or anything like that, but it was something a bit more encouraging, don't we think? Yeah, I think he was definitely solid. Um, you know, I still wouldn't, obviously, I don't think anyone's going to say he deserves to get started just yet. Or, <clears throat> but I think um, he's, if he keeps playing like this and carries on the way he's played this game, he's definitely a good enough starter. Not starter, sorry, but a backup for any midfielder that we need. Um, I was really impressed by his ball distribution, which I wasn't something um, something I was expecting. In fact, before the game, I was a bit concerned that we don't have Hakan, we don't have Tonali, we don't have Benassa, like who's going to, you know, move the ball around? Because obviously Kess, that's not Kessie's um, strong point. But Mate did, I think, fair, I think he did a good job on it. It was a world class, obviously, but again, he did a good job. A uh, few long balls. And yeah, it was really good, in my opinion. I think defensively, uh, I think he's taller than Kessier, so he, he has that presence in the midfield, which is, I think, needed, especially if Kessier is ever injured. We can just slot him in as well. No, I think he did he did well, actually, as well, but um, I think we were particularly missing someone like Tonali or Benisar, uh, to kind of control the game. It's, we were like, quite frustrated in the first half, I thought. No, I wasn't really a fan of the way that like, like Crotone were able to just sort of like kick the ball about with such like yeah. it's, 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 you know, again they didn't really create anything or cause us any problems but they, they did like stop us from playing like the, the way we would ideally want to play and I, I think we did miss that sort of character in the midfield and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, even, I do agree yeah, with Joe yeah yeah he did you know what I expected him to do you know he wasn't like like really good, but he did his job very well. And yeah, I think he can do a few decent passes. I really thought, you know, he did better than what I expected, honestly. And as a backup, I think he's gonna do well. And and I and I and I one thing I want him to improve is his positioning. Like sometimes he goes to tackle and he leaves his like position empty. Like his yeah, awareness his of, behind, of the yeah. team, and yeah, the space. Yeah, I hope it improves. Overall, I think it's a decent. Like at the start, he did pretty good. I think that he's a lot better than Krunic in that position because Krunic is just awful, in my opinion. I, I think he should be sold as soon as possible because Krunic is not uh, he's not a pivot player. Miti looks like he is. So I think uh, we're a bit better with Miti in that position over Krunic. Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel as if Krunic is talking about discipline in that double pivot. You do need your Kessies and your Benesers and your Tenalis, these people who you can rely on. And you saw it against um, it was Celtic where Krunic gave the ball away a couple of times. And it's like in that position, you're going to have your back to play a lot. You really need to be reliable, reliable on the ball. And perhaps Krunic, maybe, maybe if we're being generous, he gets a spot further up the pitch in a Camel left wing position. But when you see people like Hauger and um, Brahim Diaz, um, what they've offered to a team this season. I think that, yeah, Krunic, um, he's not he's not a central midfielder. He's not a central midfielder. And then he probably is maybe a left winger or a cam, but the quality that we have there, yeah, I don't think it's, I, I don't think it um, allows him to get near the squad going forward. If, if we're going to be serious, pushing for champion, uh, for the title next season or whatever, or yeah, as we, try, as we try and progress, I think we need to be kind of moving away from that sort of player. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about Adam Munaz. Uh, Adam Munaz at uh, Crotone, I thought he did all right in the right-wing position. I think he had a better game than Salamakers and Cassie Leo. You guys noticed the one shot he had on Don Ruma, forced him to make a save. It's quite a good shot, too. Yeah. yeah. So he I does look uh, promising. Like, I think there was the one um, play where he just dribbled uh, through a couple of our players and then, again, shot. Yeah. So, I think... 
you know, I think he's a free agent in June as well. Uh, I'm not completely sure. Right. I just read that um, on Twitter. I don't know how reliable that would be. But if he is, then obviously, you know, because I think he, he was on loan at Cagliari this year, I believe, and he only played he a couple was, of was. games. So <clears throat> I think he's only played a couple of games this season. So he does look promising, but I feel like if he does carry on playing the way he played against a big team today, um, you know, I think he's definitely a player that can make some noise during the summer and definitely someone we should look into because our right wingers right now are not that good. <laughs> He's, uh, he's Algerian to that connection to Ben Affair. Ben Affair and we know yeah. how good uh, right wing Algerians are. You got Mares. Uh, Mares, yeah. Got that flair oh. about them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Matt mentioned the title race. Do we think we can get to the Scudetto? Or... Joe, can, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, uh, I mean, to be honest, I mean, I, I don't think we could we could sit here and say that, you know, we've, we've got, we've become winter champions and we've got beyond the halfway point of the season and we're still at the top without, you know, we are serious title contenders. It's just, you know, shouldn't shy away from that. But at the same time, I don't think anyone would be like, you know, really, really upset if we didn't win it in the end. Um, so, I mean, I think it primarily uh, depends on how consistent we are against these sort of teams like Crotone, Spezia, Bologna. They, these sort of games just need to be won. And, uh, you know, and we've been doing that all season, all season long. We've pretty much got all the points against teams we absolutely should be beating, except for like maybe, uh, what was it? It was like Parma, Parma. and um, Parma and Genoa. It was like two games in a row, but like, and, and that's that actually caught our lead at the top from like five points down to two. So, you know, those games are going to cost us. But uh, in the end, I think I think being consistent in those sort of teams uh, is going to be really, really important. And uh, I think we're also going to need to have a big performance against either Inter or Juventus. Like, we're going to need to beat one of them, ideally both of them. Uh, but, you know, the, you know, in the games we play them this season, I mean, the derby, I think anything but a loss would be good for us, really. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think we can win it. Uh, I don't think we will, though. I think I mean, Inter are, are better than us, to be honest. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that beginning of the season, after how well we did in the restart in the summer, I think everyone's goal when we started when we signed players like Tonali, um, that that was the goal top four, and we've got ourselves in an incredible position now to get top four. So we're twelve points clear of fifth, which is Napoli, and they've got that game in hand, but it is against Juve. So worst case scenario, there's, we're going to be nine points clear in these places. So that's a very good position to be for top four. I think I watched Pioli's interviews on YouTube after um, games, the post match reaction, and he keeps saying like this uh, cliche thing, one game at a time, but. Um, recently what he started to do is he started to talk about um, get our objective so when I, I, I'm a, I'm from Leicester obviously and then uh, with Ranieri he used to say the same thing uh, obviously it was different because Leicester were relegation threatened but he'd just say our objective is 40 points um, we'll get that and then we'll see where we go and that should be ours I think our focus should be top four let's make sure that next season we're hearing the Champions League music at the San Siro and then we'll, we might get to I don't know mid-April or um, early April, and we'll be we'll be um, maybe still top, but we'll definitely we'll have secured a Champions League space, and then that's when we can really start to reassess and see, um, yeah, see whether we're tight with challenges. I think our situation is somewhat similar to Man United's because they uh, they've kind of fell off a bit now, but they they no one expects them to be in the title race, and that's the same with us. No one expects us to be in the title race, but to be in this title race and then just say, nah, we'll leave it. That's the most stupid thing we could possibly do. So I think, yeah, I think it's just about, as Pioli says, one game at a time, get top four and then, yeah, reassess. But I don't think there's I anything think, uh, to stop us. We've been taking a lot of points off, you know, the lower level teams like like Katone, like Parma. Like you, you guys would notice for the last three seasons that we'd lose these type of games. We get, we walk away with nothing against mid-table teams, relegation teams, you know, just tight games like that. We'll be dropping points under Gattuso. Yeah, Benavento, we got one point out of six against them. This season we're doing less. Bastards, yeah. man. But, uh, but yeah, no, we've been picking points off. These are the games that you need to win. I think Joe or Red tweeted earlier this season where, like, we're winning the big games, 
but we're also winning the games against the mid table and the lower level teams, which are equally as important as winning the big games because those can, like you said, can de- decide a title right there. Yeah, that's encouraging. I think it's interesting what Matt said about, um, you know, the sort of what the objective was at the start of the season. And I think I remember uh, a quote from Maldini where he said that the squad was like built that he thinks it can compete for the top four, but it wouldn't be like a financial disaster if, you know, we finished fifth or sixth again. So I think that's, it's really encouraging that we're, we're so high up on the table because, you know, there's, there's, there's so much margin for error in, in, from like a financial or like, or what would actually be like a successful season for us? So. I think I think uh, we can uh, like aim for the title because we are beating the small teams. If we can draw against the big teams, I think it sh- shouldn't be that hard. And we're not really showing signs of slowing down. Like every match we played with smaller teams, we have played with our first gear. Like we didn't really show any intensity. You know, we we we've been beating them without really doing anything. Mm-hmm. So I think we have, a, we have a good chance if we can continue beating the smaller teams, the mid-table teams, and, you know, like Inter. I think whoever wins the Derby is going to win the league. I think the Derby is super important for us. You guys know so how I, we left it really late to pick up some points, like Udinese, and then the Theo header, I think it was uh, Parma, was it? Lazio, 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 Lazio. Yeah, Lazio, yeah. Lazio. we've left so quite late to pick up some close points like that. Mm-hmm. I just noticed that. I feel like our, our team waits till it hits seventieth minute, and then we just go all in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and since Ivra is back, since everyone is coming back, I, I don't really see us slowing down. With Venezuela back, I really think we can really fight for it, unless we drop points like last time against Genoa and Parma. I think with the full squad, I really think we can win it this year. I, and yeah. that's why the derby is the derby feels so important this year because you know with the Ibra Lukaku drama and everything. Yeah. yeah. If we could choose, if each one of us could choose between winning the Scudetto and the Europa League, which one would we pick? One answer. It's quite easy, I think. Yeah, the Scudetto. Um. Yeah. But can we? Do we think we can go far in the Europe League as well? Because obviously, balancing between this, you know, the Scudetto race and the Europe League, which you know, um, I think the first game we have coming up against, um, can't remember the name. Uh, Red Red Star. There, there we go. You know, it should on paper be you know an alright matchup. You know, Red yeah. Star with all due respect is not the best team. Uh, in the European right now, so I think on that note we should be able to go through. But how far do we think we can go, Joe? Um, well, it's, it's hard to say uh, at this point because uh, we're you know I don't think the team is really quite. Um, I don't think you know we're, we're experienced enough to um, to like be against these sort of like big Eng- you know the big English teams, big Spanish teams. Uh, even like you know the German ones, yeah. So there are going to be good teams that we're going to have to play, and we did see worryingly uh, against Lille, like we're just like, you know, we looked like we were just like not at their level whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I think we'll get past Red Star, Red Star Belgrade, but uh, I think it'll be a similar case of the last time uh, we made it into the knockout rounds of the Europa League that you know we we just don't have the squad depth for like you know. Or that really, I think at this point, uh, I don't want to say the mentality, but like, I don't know if you know what I mean. Like, uh, yeah, this is competing in two fronts. It's just it's gonna be it's gonna be hard, and I don't think yeah. we can do it. But if we do, I'll, I'll be very happy, and I'll be yeah. very happy to be wrong. So, and that really does depend on who we get yeah. in the next round after Red Star Belgrade, right? You know, they have Diego mm-hmm. Falcinelli and at Belgrade. That's that's the biggest threat. Yeah. Um, so that's about it. But if we get easy opponents, maybe we can progress. But like Joe said, it depends on the level of opponents. We weren't up to par with the deal. Manchester United might be an interesting one if they do manage to get past Real Sociedad. But I don't think uh, if we get matched against uh, teams like Neil or Sociedad, I don't think we'll be able to do it. So I think we should focus on top four in the Scudetto. Yeah. Definitely. I think I, I, in terms of going somewhere. 
Oh, no, I'm sorry. I think uh, we are not going to really focus on Europa. I think we're going to play our B team. Yeah, I think, and I think we, we should. Yeah, if we play, if we play our main team, I think we can reach till semis. But I feel like uh, our management won't really focus on the league because I feel league is more much more important than Europa. Yeah, I think in terms of Europa, Man United or Tottenham, I think they're the two teams who realistically should be winning it or at least getting to the final. Uh, in terms of quality, I don't think we have the quality necessary to go to even get to the final semis. Um, if we do, I'll be surprised, pleasantly surprised. Um, but again, I don't, we don't have the depth and the experience and stuff to go for Europe just yet because, you know, we haven't been good in the past seasons and stuff. I don't Matt, see I got a quick question for you. If we get matched up against Leicester, who are you backing? Um, in front of my family, Leicester, but I think I think Milan, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know that meme with the man wearing the... Juventus and the Milan shirt. You should make <laughs> uh, you should recreate the real Leicester shirt. Yeah. yeah. In terms of Europa League, I think the only benefit, like obviously it's a trophy, but the only benefit we'll get from if we were six or seven from we're struggling in the league, Europa League, we put all our eggs in that basket because that's our roots to the Champions League. Yeah. Champions League in the league, we're in such control of that. We're in such a good position. And to just to sacrifice this. 12 point lead we have in the league by like, I don't know playing the likes of Hauger and Castillejo and um, Dallo no disrespect to these players but playing them in the league and then throwing all our eggs in one basket with the Europa League which is can be at times a lottery and to put all our focus on that in a knockout tournament I think it'd be quite naive and I think the only benefit that we could get from the Europa League is Champions League football but we're unlike when we played Arsenal a few years ago we're, we're in a place in the league that that we'll get is Champions League football. So I think that, yeah, as uh, as we've said, um, Red Star, that should be like easy. And it might be cocky to say that, but I think it's at the same time, just speaking facts, it is an easy game. But like if we get put up against Manu or Tottenham, we saw it with Arsenal a few years ago, albeit we had Montalivo in midfield. They are um, the English teams. You see like these People have played Champions League every single year since they were 18, and some of them are 30. They've they've got tw- they've got 12 years of Champions League ex- uh, Champions League Europa League experience. So, yeah, I think um, I think in the um, I think put focus on the Serie A and then just see see what happens in the Europa League. Yeah. Um, to touch off that, we have quite a few players in the squad right now with Champions League experience. Uh, Theo Hernandez, Takao Tomori now. Um, hey, I think Hakan Chalanuglu, obviously, bro. Oh, his yeah. Favorite, yeah. So I think that helps for next season, if anything, uh, for our current squad going forward. Raheem Diaz, as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, he what a goal! Uh, yeah, 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 against Real Madrid. Yeah. The goal. Yeah. I think in terms of mentality, should we get a uh, pro Red Star? I think in terms of mentality. We, you know, I don't think we're the type of team that would just give up, even if like 20 all down at the 80th minute against Man United, we 100% wouldn't give up and stuff, which is, which I really appreciate. But besides that, I don't, you know, I don't think we as much uh, have the experience or the mentality to actually go further than that for Trinity just yet. Yeah. Just picture we've got a 12 point gap in the um, Champions League space. Pieces. And then we put, and then we fully go for the Europa League, and we start resting the likes of uh, Romagnoli and uh, Kessie in the league. And then, uh, so we get past Red Star, and then quarter final round of sixteen, we get Manu, Rao, and we're, then next thing you know, we're third in the league. We're five point, we're only five points clear of the Champions League spaces, and we're out of the Europa League. So, yeah, I think the safest option is to just go for the league full on and then Europa League just see if we can ride a bit of luck with the draws and maybe get a few fluky results because I think that's what it's going to take in a knockout like with England in the World Cup we we got really lucky with the opponents we had so if we have something similar like that and we can capitalise on that and then maybe get to a semi-final final then so be it but yeah I think it'd be a bit risky to fully go for the Europa League and that said I, I mean it's been so long now since we've had like a really big European win so, like, if we did get up against like Manchester United or even like a Tottenham, you know, it would just be like, you know, it'd be really great if we could win that. Uh, I'd be really happy if we could be, be like a big team in Europa League, even if we didn't win it. You know, it'd be a bit like, you know, a statement to say that, you know, we're, we're yeah, relevant we're again in European back. football. Yeah. yeah. 
do we want to talk about the loanees then uh that we've got yeah. like Dalo, so Tumori, our current loanees are Dalo, Tomori, as you said Meite, Brahim I think that's it no and Tonali yeah, sorry. Tonali yeah yeah yeah. So, yeah, no, I mean, quite well. yeah. So who who should we keep and who should we ship back? Ship back. I feel like we're not gonna buy Brahim. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Poli is really impressed with him so far. Mm-hmm. And I think we're gonna keep uh, we're gonna keep def- uh, Dalot. Recently, a news came out like United wants to sell him, or like willing to sell him for a lower price. Because at first they wanted around forty million, right, for Dallas. I think they wanna they can make it lower, like thirty. Should we go for Dallas if he's for thirty? I think thirty is still a bit, still a lot, in my opinion. Yeah. For yeah. I mean, he's young, he's promising. He can play on both sides for thirty million. Mm. You know, he has. Yeah, for he, backup, really. Yeah, for a backup as well, and like he hasn't, you know, impressed as much. He has impressed, but not as much as I thought he would. I was still keeping, but he hasn't been on that level where I would just dash out for a million for him. I, th- I think 10 to 15 max for Brahim and Dalo. I don't think Real Madrid would, you know, let Brahim go for, go for that team. cheap. Yeah, I don't think yeah. 25, 25 is a bit too much. for. It Brahim. is a bit too much, yeah. And I think, I don't know, because from what we've seen, obviously Brahim has the class, the skills, the ball control, which is great. But his weakest point, obviously, he's really small, has doesn't have much physicality and I think in Serie A you need that bit of physicality because yeah. there are only a couple of players I can think are like really good even though they're small like Insigne that's like the only player I can think of in Serie A who's just been good at it how do you think about that let Ozer play instead of Brahim next season anyway well, yeah I mean you know he scored I think the brace or was just one goal he scored a really good goal I think two days ago also so I think he's definitely someone who should be looked into. And <clears throat> I think Maldini should be loaned out. Um, because I feel like if his name, if his surname was Maldini, he would not currently be here. He would be loaned out like Colombo was loaned out. So, yeah, I think next year's come should be Hakan. Probably not Brahim. If, if it's lower than 20 million, then maybe and then try to get another one. Uh, my dream would be the pole from Udinese, but that seems quite unlikely to do his price and <clears throat> competition around him as well. I think the people, I think the people who are replaceable are um, Brahim, um, Metier, and um, Dallo. I think Tonali, although it's an option to buy, I think we've got him. I don't think there's any, like you see the, what we see on social media and on YouTube, there's all these emotional videos where they're visiting his hometown in um, Lombardy, where they're doing all these documentaries. Oh, he loves Milan. <laughs> I think it'd be very, very ruthless now to go, okay, you're back to Brescia. <laughs> and like, it's, I don't think it's happening. I think when we're talking about who we're going to redeem, I think Tonali, I think he's in. I think he's a Milan player. I don't, yeah. well, it's a loan, but it doesn't feel like a loan. Yeah. I think what about people like, Tomori, I don't know if I've been biased because he's English, but mm. I, he has been unreal since he yeah, came in. Like he, he offers us something different. I think Romagnoli and Kier, they're kind of whip the ball into the box, we'll head it away sort of people, we'll be in the yeah. right position. Tomori, we see it so much, it's almost like a bit scary. He he presses so much, a player will have the ball and he'll just chase after him all the way to the halfway yeah. line. He offers us something different. And I think and his and he's fast, he's so fast as well. Yeah, he's really but I think, yeah, I think it, we're talking maybe 30, 25 million euros. So about 20, 25 million pounds. I think that, because we're talking about um, Dallo being a backup. Tomori would technically be a backup, but he'd be a backup who's very, very near the first team. He'll be someone yeah. who, when he is moving on. Currently set at 28 million. The mm-hmm. the implos right now, I think it's 28. Yeah. So I think, obviously he's only played a couple of games, um, but he's been really good. Um, so if he does carry on like that, you know, I, I wouldn't want it to be a Bakayoko 2.0, as we guys yeah. were talking about earlier, um, from the same team as well. So I think, and I think we will redeem him, to be fair, unless, you know, he 
drops performances or just gets into something like that goes wrong. Unless something goes wrong, I think we will keep him. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, with Matt and uh, on Tenali. I think he's he's definitely staying. And I actually think he's he's done like pretty well considering you know he's in his first season in such a big you know he's he's, he's basically in his dream job and he's like you know he's like twenty he's the same age as me and uh, you know and yeah he's, he's he's doing well I think um, particularly if you consider that we've actually at this point we have now played more games with Tenali than Benisser and we're first so you know by that does mean he's the starting like midfielder for the most effective team in the league. So you can't be that and bad. That's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, and I think people uh, forget. Sorry. I think with like the other ones. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think with the other ones, like I think I think Dallo won't be bought. I think Brian won't be bought mostly because I don't think Manchester United or or Real Madrid will sell them to us at a price we can afford. Uh, realistic, but I mean, I'd be happy to see them loaned in again for another year because you know they, they both look like they're decent. Uh, you know, Dallow's not really done anything wrong since he's been here, and he's mostly played out of position, so I'd be happy to see him stay. Yeah, uh, I think, and tomorrow I really hope we get him. But you never know. I think with Tonali, people forget he is the backup of Kessi and Benasse, who have been two of the best midfielders in the league, and you can't expect him to be on that level. If the age of 20 after being playing for Brescia in the first season. So I think people are, are over criticizing him, forgetting he's playing in a new uh, role as well because he used to play in a, a free midfield at Brescia and he did good. And now he's having to adapt to a new team um, in Serie A, a big team, not Brescia anymore, who got relegated last season in a new formation. And he's in the pick and pick and order. He's behind two of the best midfielders, probably in Europe as well. I think that Tonali will be one of the he'll be a cornerstone for our project in the future. The next five years will be one of the best players in our club. That's what I think. Uh, people writing him off. He's young. He's he's hungry. He wants to pick this club. And I just think that you know it's it's not fair to write him off because obviously, like you were saying, he's young. But the talent's there. I think all of us know that the talent for Tonali is there. Obviously, he's one of the best midfielders in in uh, one of the best young midfielders in Italy. The talent was there at Brescia. So for Italy and Milan, I think he's the future. Yeah, I think about in terms of replaceability as well. We've seen there was a few rumours that on deadline day we were maybe looking at um, Jordan Amave uh, from Marseille. We were looking at um, Matthias Wiener from Palmeiras. And these are like this one I mean about Dallo. I think he's been good. And this one I mean he might we might get to the end of the season and he might have had like a Cafu level season or something like that. But the reality of it is not. And I think he's replaceable. I think we can get that Matis Wiener in or we can get that um, Amavi in and we can save a bit of money to invest elsewhere. Same with Brahim Diaz as well. I think Otavio may have rejected us, but there'll be players around who Brahim Diaz isn't someone who, if we miss out on, we're going to be like, oh God, that's it. That's the end of our season. That's we're We're awful. And the same with Metier as well. So I think with people like Tamori and Tenali, I think they're high quality people, high quality players that we can proper get behind and say, yeah, okay, we're going to buy you, we're going to invest in you. You're young, you're good for our future. But someone like Dallo, unless uh, and Metier and Brian Diaz, unless they really prove something to the end of the season, I think that there may be cheaper options. I think we'll just have to reassess at the end of the season. Um, I want to ask each of you uh, the top three right wing picks that you would get for the summer. I'll start off with uh, Florian Thalbaum, um, Adam Unas, and Domenico Berardi are my top three players that I think we should get one of them at least. Um, yeah, I, I think that Tovan's the one that's um, looking like it's the most uh, likely because th there's a proper mess going on at Marseille at the moment with Villas Boas and the ultras storming the training ground. And apparently he's pushing for the move. I think he'd be ideal. He's Suso, but with an end product, I feel. I think he's he's um, he can really, um, he can cut in and he's, he's a goal scorer. He's played up front before. I think he's my first option. And to be honest, uh, you have these three lined up in your head, but I genuinely can't think of any more because I'm, I'm almost in my head. We've got Tovan for next season. so um, He's on a free too. Yeah, he's on a free. I think that Tovan coming in, 
maybe move on Castillejo. I think I think yeah, I think that'll be really good for the summer. Um, I think for me, I think that Tovey and Tao, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. I think he's the most realistic one. I think he's the one we should 100% go for and get him. He's a World Cup winner, has experience. It's better than Castillejo and Sam Zola makers, which is already a step up. So I think we should definitely go all in, try to get him. He's, I think, free agent in June as well. So that makes it a bit easier as well. And the one right winger, which I know we're never going to get, but I would love to see him in the Lozano from Napoli. He's he's not only a right wing, he can play anywhere. He's so good. He's probably been Napoli's best player this season. And Napoli's never going to sell him because he just got here. He's never going to sell us to Milan as well, just a uh, direct rival. But he's one player I would love to see him in the And he's young as well. I think we're getting to Van. I mean, he's already free. And Maldini did talk about him a few times already. So I think we're going to get him. But uh, if I had to choose, you know what? Why the fuck not go for Messi? Just okay. go all in. Like, you know, like, I guess least and zero. Just sell half of the team to pay salary. Just, just, just sell the entire team. Just get Messi. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I think when I get to Van. Uh, but my only my only doubt with him is how is he defensively? Because even though Castillejo is not really showing anything in attack, but he's really been helping the team in defense. Same with Salemaker, they're like both of them are really pressing. Always goes back to defense, you know, comes back helps us. I really don't know like much about Tuvan and you know like what kind of player is it. So that's, that's only my thing. biggest concern when it comes to right wingers and right midfielders, and which is why like. Because as I said previously, Pioli likes having someone in the right wing who comes back, runs a lot of stuff like that. And Salamaker and Castellet are both players that do that a lot. And I'm just concerned, should we get someone like, who, I'm not sure about uh, Tobin's, um, how he defends as well, but should we get someone who, you know, attacks a lot and doesn't come back, would that just mess up the whole system? Just, you know what I mean? Um, to touch on that, I think it's good to have Dovan, if he, even if he doesn't track back, but add Salamakers to come off the bench. So it depends on the game. So you can bring on Salamakers okay. if you need that defensive quality, but then also have Dovan if you want to get goals. Yeah, that's yeah. a good way. Right? Uh, has anyone else got anything to add on that, or are we going to move on to contracts? Uh, we can move yeah. on to the last two. All right, sorry, Joe. Uh, Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't have really much to add on that, to be honest. But I mean, I, you know, remember I watched Tovan, I think he looks like, you know, a really good player. At the, um, I think the most important thing is that so right now it looks like the options we have in the left wing are like like vastly superior to what we have in the right. And even like the Salamakers on his good day, realistically, all we're going to get, get out of him is some like nice quick passes, you know, that help out in the counter attack. But like, you know, we really want to be having a more ambitious player in that position. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, no disrespect to Sal Marcus because he can be pretty, he can be competitive. So, yeah. Thoughts on Douglas Costa? Yeah. I don't like him. I mean, he's better than what we are, but he's a Juve uh, with this whole spinning thing. That's changed mm-hmm. my opinion of him. He stopped yeah. at uh, Simeone's son, or was it? Yeah. Or no, yeah. Di Francesco. Di Francesco's son. I mean, yeah. I think. <laughs> He is better than what we have, and I think um, Juve is just trying to get rid of him in any way, shape, or form right now. Um, you know, he he's thirty two, I believe, thirty one around that bracket. He has that experience, uh, but the, again, the most concerning thing for me is the injuries. He's always just injured. But you know, as a backup, should we get rid of both Castellar and Salamakas? Which I'll probably we probably won't. I think he's someone which we could probably look into, but I I would not put him in my top five to replace uh, Castilleo slash Salamakas. So I'm surprised you didn't say James Forrest from Celtic as a right wing option. I, James Forrest is great, but like he's he's Celtic free and free. He'll never he'll never he'll never join Milan. And I'm not saying that because I like Celtic as well. You can. He's just like, like that sort of player. I don't think he would leave. Yeah, I think ideal situation, it's Castillejo out, maybe get, I don't know, 10, 15 million for him. Keep Salamakas. We should this. pay 10, 15 million to get rid of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. And then Honestly, just, if we got 10 p for him, I'd be happy at this point. But like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's fine. And then just keep that Salah Marcus option to um, be that defensive option, like uh, Naeem said. Um, and then um, Tovan, our proper quality option. And then, yeah, then I think that'll work. I want to talk about Thoban's, uh Martin Newcastle uh, spell. I mean, it didn't work out for him, but he was young, obviously. Went back to Marseille, did quite well. He's a changed player now. But uh, it's like uh, the Aston Villa situation when uh, Veretout, like you see Veretout, he was really bad at the Aston Villa team. I think it was 2016. He was horrible. But now look, uh, he's a key player for Roma. So I think Thoban will be a similar type of player if he comes to us, like Veretout is for Roma. Yeah, if we if we have yeah. if you have a good player and you surround them with good players, they'll be better than Newcastle that season were awful under Pardew, I think it was. And then Villa that season, the 15-16 season, where they had oh god, they were awful. So yeah, that's put uh, good players with other good players and you'll see the best of them. Before we move on, I just had a quick question. Do you guys think uh, Tomori might be our second quickest player after Theo Hernandez? I, th- I think he, he might be. He might be. I think that there was an interview um, with one of the Chelsea players, I think, last season. Yeah. I don't know who it was. And he was asked who's the fastest player in the team. And he replied, Tomori, obviously, it's not a reliable source. But, you know, it does show he has some pace, especially if, if you're thinking, you know, when you think of a football uh, in your team and you think of the fastest player, you don't go to central backs immediately because central backs are not usually the fastest players. But, you know, that just shows how quick he is and he can be. So I think, so, I mean, Besides Theo, I mean, Leo is probably also up there, I think. One of the fastest players in the team. Maybe, no, nah, I wouldn't put Salah Marcus. But yeah, I think definitely top three, in my opinion. Yeah. Right, should we move on to the final point, which is the contract situation with Hakan and Jijo? Yeah. Okay. So I think um, the reports are, and this is really encouraging, Don Aruma came out in the press and said, Raiola knows what he needs to do, which is if you compare that to 2017, it's a complete subversion where he seemed like Raiola's bitch pretty much. But um, but yeah, now we've got Don Ruma who it's got this late and I would be worried and I am still a bit worried, but the idea of him really wanting to stay, telling people he wants to stay, telling the media, telling his agent, telling the club he wants to stay, although it's not done yet, the will of the player in this scenario. It might not be the best contract, there might be a release clause, there might be, it might only be three years, it might not be like seven years or something like that, but I think I don't I think it will be new. And then regarding Hakan, um, because his agent um is a bit more not mental, um, I think that um yeah, I think that's a lot closer and um, the, the finer details on that won't be as complicated as it is with Raiola. So I think we shouldn't have let it get this late and it's quite poor because the management have been quite good on stuff like this recently. Um, like, yeah, not leaving things to the last minute, getting our transfer business done early. But um, yeah, it's, it's quite a shame that it's got this late, but I think I think we'll be fine, yeah. yeah I think also, uh, I don't remember when uh, it was in summer last, uh, you know, we were trying to renew Zlatan and and that always that always seemed to go on like two weeks, two or three weeks, kind of longer than it really should have. So I think you know the management aren't worried about you know getting it done quickly. So like you know it can calm down a bunch of like fans. Like you know we you know we'd all love to see Don Ruma renewed tomorrow, but like at the same time I'm 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 happier to you know have that announcement come, you know in August the 31st or whatever it is, <laughs> uh, you know, and it would be a better deal for the club and for the player. Uh, so the important thing is that he stays, and I think, I think he will, because, uh, as, you, you know, you just know some players, if they're, you know, if they, if they love playing for the club, and I think Donnarumma, sort of, you know, he, he is like the, the modern day Maldini, if you say, for this club. I mean, he has, he has a real chance to become a legend of that kind of calibre. By the club, um, you know, it depends on the rest of the team as well. But uh, I, I think I think Donnarumma will stay, and uh, Hakan, I'm I'm not so sure, but I hope he does uh, because he clearly is like irreplaceable at this point. We just don't have another player in the team that can offer what he does, um, and the game completely changed when he came on against Kone. Like you know, it's like two assists and like. So in like 90 seconds or something, and it's something mental like that. So like, 
and we just look like we're clueless without him really. Uh doesn't mean there's not better players out there that we could get, but uh, I think we should get him done so we know we have a player we can rely on. And then, you know, if you know, if we want to bring in Messi as well, like go for it. But <laughs> the important thing is that we just game. have uh yeah, we've got like something we can rely on and build upon. So yeah, I, I hope hope they both stay. Uh, I'm certain GG will. I'm not so certain about Hakan, but the I think that Gigio is one of ours. He's a Milanista to the core. Um, it's just the media is making things out. You know how the Italian media is. They love to wrestle things. I think the Reno will come in time. Raiola just being Raiola. He loves the drama. He, you know, he loves carrying things on. But I think uh, it will come in time. But do you guys remember the summer where, the, in 2017, where Mila, half of Milan Twitter were like, Pizari is generational. Which tell Gigio, you know, we got Pizari in our ranks. Fine. That would have been a great mistake. If that yeah. actually, if he was actually sold, great mistake. I think um, we have to keep Gigi because he, because from an outside perspective, you know, you look at that club is trying to come back in top of Europe, hasn't been in the UCL in almost a de- well, not a decade, but a lot of seasons more than we should have. And let's in selling or getting rid of Gigi, not even selling because if he doesn't renew, it's just going to be a free transfer for anyone. So that would be a colossal mistake and it will just look terrible and then you know if we do sell him we could get probably 100 million if we could just lose him as a free transfer then just so terrible Kappa's stuff. 80 Gigio's 160 twice the definitely. <laughs> yeah definitely and not renewing Gigio would just be a huge step back in our project that's going on in terms of Hakan I think he will renew I think it I think the management isn't looking into renewals as much as we normal people would like them to but i think they have both situations under control and i hope they will both renew and i think they will yeah Yeah, same here i think they can renew um for hakan i'm not really sure i think he wants eight million right or seven million something like that i think he's gonna get five million and Gijo, I'm pretty sure it's going to sign just Raiola doing his, you know, Raiola things. Uh, like, uh, like, uh, like, if you see all the interviews, I think, like, the way Maldini is, I think Maldini has it under control. I think Maldini is pretty sure both of them will sign, so he's not really bothered or in a hurry. And, yeah, Gijo, I think he's going to be a club legend. I feel like he's going to be, like, our second Maldini, if you will. I think he's here to stay. If he continues to make Champions League every year, I don't think he's there. And Hakan, no. like you guys said, it's even if he leaves, we can't find him anyone like his ability for like 30 million. We have to go at least 50 million to find someone with Hakan's ability, honestly. So I think, honestly, I think we can get both of them. I think Donnarumma is going to get, in the end, around 9 million with 1 million bonus. And Hakan's gonna get five million with one million bonus. Right. So yeah, uh, imagine. I'm, I'm, yeah, go ahead. Go no, I'm, I'm oh. done. Oh, okay. Um, I was saying, uh, imagine we sold Hakan and got Jack Grealish. That would have been. That oh. will be something. That would be amazing. He's so that's, good. That's, that's like we're coming for you, still. Right, kind of shit. Try so much. What a player, so man. Good. Yeah. Oh, another thing, um, to touch touch on, I see these Premier League fans on Twitter calling Greenwood generational, Saka generational, but Donnarumma is never in the generational tweets ever. He, I mean, he's the know, best keeper of, like at this yeah. age. I mean, first of all, it is Premier League Twitter. Like, you know, you know, I'm not gonna get into it, but you know, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. But in terms of Gigi, he's been doing this for five years. He's been outstanding for half a decade and people just don't talk about it for some reason maybe because he's a goalkeeper maybe because Milan hasn't been as good as he Champions could as they, yeah so maybe that's the reason but you know I think if we make a Champions League and cons- uh, constantly for the next year he, he saved us a few points this season too right definitely oh yeah my god and like he a double save uh yeah. The game, the last game, I forgot who was, but he saved with the speed, and then there's another save yet yeah, shortly after. Yeah, yeah. I think the, I think like you said, if we keep getting Champions League, then 
we don't need it. We don't need people to know he's good. If anything, keep it on the low down and we can keep him forever sort of thing. But I think if we keep getting Champions League, then that's when people will start to notice how good he is. I think the Euros will be big for him. He's going to go into the Euros as Italy's number one. If Italy go far, which they're, they're looking really good, they're looking really good defensively and, and in, a, in an attacking sense as well. I think this, yeah, the Euros, people will start respecting him a bit more. Um, I think that's everything covered, isn't it? I think we're... Yeah, actually, I want, I want to add one last thing. Uh, I think the Napoli fans were comparing him to Meret a few seasons ago, if you guys can remember. Yeah. He does so, say he's not going to start off with his own team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just peanut. Was Peanut plays most of the games. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, yeah that I mean, I think phrase. a couple of years ago, you know, you could have made an argument that Merit, you know, could possibly be someone who could clean Jesus' shoes. But I think as of right now, but I think as of right now, he's, I, I don't think he was ever anywhere near Jesus' level. Like, I, I think even Sirogo yeah. right now is better than Merit. Like, as I said, he doesn't even stop with his own team, so he shouldn't even be a conversation right now, to be fair. Yeah. Do you guys see the confused, not... uh, the confused tweet? He, do you guys see that? He, he was like, bring him to Real Madrid, something about Donnarumma to Real Madrid. Oh, yeah, he's, he's like, he's it. wasting his career or something, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think, I don't, I, I don't think he said those exact words. I don't want to, you know. Something similar. But he, he said something like that, and, you know, it is to, uh, you know, he's, he can do whatever he wants, but. You know, it wasn't so because um, I've been, I've all, I've really liked Casillas for the years. Like, you know, he's just been such a good goalkeeper for until Diego Lopez and stuff take over. And he was just such a nice guy. And obviously, I wasn't expecting that. But obviously, he's free to, like, r- right now, he's no offense to him in the world of football. He's not really anyone right now. Like, you know, he was retired and everything. So, you know, he's feel free to take whatever they want. But I don't think it's going to affect anything. Do we have any final thoughts? Hey guys, I have a question. Uh, I was just looking through our matches and we're going to face Atalanta last day. Oh, God. Any thoughts? If it comes to last day and we need a win and Gus Branch just does and <laughs> destroys us, you will you will never hear from me again. I'm done. Let's, I'm not, out let, let's, just, let's <laughs> not let it get to the last day. Just... <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I realized that we were playing Atlanta on the last match day of the season, like in the middle of the night. I just I woke up like you know, in, like one of those movies, like where you have a bad dreams. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, but like the thing is, knowing Milan, I don't That's know, man. The only like, thing Atalanta does every year just humiliates yeah. us and then just doesn't do anything good for the rest of the season. <laughs> And funny story, um, I was in LA when the 5 no hammering happened. So because of times, I had to wake up at 4 in the morning to watch the Atalanta game. Oh, and no. I, I, I woke up at 4 only to see this happen. I was the lowest point of my year, man. <laughs> I almost cried. And Gasparini dancing, man. That just, oh my yeah. God. Gasparini dancing, he really sent me. Yeah. I hate him so much. Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah, just well, go, does, go on. Does anyone have any final thoughts before we wrap up? Um, I think I think James Madison to uh, to Milan would be a nice one for me. I've overrated them. <laughs> right, yeah, right, Matt? I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think I think Leicester need Madison. I think we'll keep Hakan and Leicester will keep Madison. Then we both got two good playmakers. <laughs> uh, would you exchange Hakan for Madison? At, at Leicester. Yes. Yeah. I mean, from a Milan perspective. From a Milan perspective. Maybe, maybe. But I, I don't think. think because the thing is, Hakan has already proved himself to be a key member for our team. It wouldn't make sense for it to be a straight swap with someone else that hasn't, you know, yeah. that somebody hasn't proven anything in Syria or in the team. Like, we know Hakan is yeah. most likely going to keep playing like he is, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Whereas if we get yeah. rid of him, bring someone else like Madison, we don't know what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. You got a left mm-hmm. foot on him, too, Madison. You've seen a couple of goals scored on his left mm-hmm. and his right. He's quite good. Yeah, I, mean, I think with with Hakan uh, as well as that, uh, I think we as uh, well, I think Milan holds the aces in that contract negotiation a little bit as well because I don't think uh, you know if he was to go to like another club like you know, like a bigger club like bigger club uh, like you know if he was to go to Manchester United or something you know I don't think he would start over Bruno Fernandes. Uh, these things you know he wouldn't start. 
right away. And and I think that would be a bad. I don't think he wants that. I think he likes that. I'm a man. He knows he's the main man in terms yeah. of the role. If he wants that position, that job, it's it's all his. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's we, the main difference between Juju's contract and Hakan because Hakan, I think he needs Milan as much as Milan needs him. Whereas JJ could just go anywhere and just be a startup. So that's the I think that's the only difference and the one concern. But you know, I'm sure he'll go both for you, so it'll be fine at the end. I think yeah. that the you, you guys noticed how Hakan was a left wing instead of Milan because he was absolute dog shit. Like he was just horrible. But then as you purely shifted to uh, a cam, he got so much better. I think that's similar to Tonali. Tonali's learning his his double pivot role. You know, but the next few seasons, once he masters that role, like, you know, Hakan got a position change. But Tonali's going through a similar position change. Once he gets a gist of it beside uh, Kessie or Benaster, I think he's going to be a top, top player. Yeah. I think the funniest thing from um, the two players that we have left from the Magnificent Seven uh, from a few summers ago was that Hakan was born as a left winger and now he's playing good football as a camp. And Kessie was born to be in a three-man midfield and is blown up in a two-man midfield. So, yeah, it's just something interesting. Obviously, the other five players have all, thank God, left. And the only two players left in the actual team are playing good in position they weren't meant to be playing when they came in. So, yeah, that was just something interesting. Uh, Lucas Belia and, uh, and uh, what's his name, Fabio Barini, they're both in, like, uh, I think it's, like, Turkey. Fati Karagumruk or something. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah Karagumruk as well. Yeah. Oh, they're balling, honestly. I think they won the last five matches. <laughs> like... Should bring them back. They can't Obviously. be done Ovilia, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it just shows how much progress we've made in a season. Like last year, our backup to Kessie would be Bilia, and our backup to any, what was the left wing of Rabbit or anyone would be Borini. Like Borini. So, you know, it just shows that we've made some progress from. The um, terrible team we had last season. No uh, to remember where uh, Ricardo Rodriguez and Antonelli, I think it was 2017 or 16, one of them. Yeah, I mean, Antonelli was the left back option. Antonelli was, was all right. Was, yeah. uh, Rodriguez, uh, you know, I don't want this video to get removed, so I'm just not going to say anything. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I mean, there know, used I to be people of... who... Go on. I mean, there used to be people yeah, that used to say yeah, Rodriguez was still star over P.O., which, you know, it's well, sections of a Milan Twitter were saying that Rodriguez is Theo shouldn't play because Rodriguez is better defensively, but then the modern day fullback requires you to go up and attack. Yeah. So Theo, I think for Theo, he's he's going to learn his defensive responsibilities as time mm-hmm. goes on. He's going to get. And he's he's been improving. Better. He's been really good defensively as well. I think people Absolutely. don't give him enough credit for like how solid he's been defensively as well. But yeah. I think that was a steal, Theo Hernandez for the price quoted daylight robbery. Mm. <laughs> Yo, honestly. Same with Bella, so. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. All right, should we wrap it up? Matt, do you want to yeah, wrap it up? Uh, yeah, uh, good to wrap it up. So, um, thank you all. I think it's been a very good first episode here on the Short Corner podcast. Uh, a nice 4 0 win to celebrate. Um, some good, um, a good future ahead with um, some good potential transfers in the summer um, the contracts are looking okay and maybe even a European trophy on the line so um, I've been Matt, I've been joined by um, Rid uh, by Joe, by Naeem and by Samir um, thank you for watching, like, subscribe and uh, hope you enjoyed and join us for the next one yeah and hopefully we have one in a couple of weeks for the middle.